Hello, everybody. My name is Magali Colleman Christopher. I'm the artistic director of Conchal Productions. And I have, I have a bunch of people that, that's going to be sharing time with me today. So, so we're going to go around and introduce ourselves. And um, then we'll start a wonderful conversation about Reset Theater Coalition. Go ahead, everyone. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the managing director of Kumu Kuhua Theater. Carla Bryan Williams. I am the artistic director for Brata Productions. I am Harry Wong III. I'm the artistic director of Kumu Kahua Theater. I am Sergey Burbank, and I am literary manager for Conch Shell Productions. And welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Those of you who just saw this, oh, Conch is live, Brata is live, Kumu Kahua <laughs> is live, and clicked on it. Thank you. So as many of you may know that we're, we've come together to form the Reset Theater Coalition. And some of you may be wondering, what is this? Why is this? I don't get it. And you're just waiting for us to start, start our event on Friday, which is tomorrow. But, but we, wanted, we wanted to come together and share what inspired this event for us. And it started actually with me. And sadly, it started as I was watching the video of the tragic murder of George Floyd. And I just lost it. And I knew I needed to do something. And as a writer, director, producer, artistic director, I knew the thing I could do was create space for artists to say whatever they needed to say in order to heal what we were all feeling. And I was just inspired. I personally, I'd say God came down and said, do something. So I did. And I reached out to amazing theaters, BIPOC theaters, and these amazing people said, yes. And I'm gonna go around to Donna and Harry and Carl. And first of all, we're gonna to go to Sergey because I called him. That was crazy, I was crazy. I was, insane. I was insane. I was like, Sergey, we gotta do something, Sergey. He was like, Magali, calm down. What's going on? <laughs> As a literary manager, we were, were, were we were busy producing the blue light series and we were talking. I was like, no, we got to leave that. We got to jump. We got to jump. We got to do something. We got to save. We got to make art that changes because our motto is art that awakens. And he said, okay, Magali, calm down. Let's process this. So Sergey, tell me, why don't you share what inspired you to say, okay, let's do something when I called you like an insane woman saying that I need to change the world and how are we going to do this with, we can't just do it conch shell. We got to do it with a bunch of theaters. We got to work together. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think part of what this moment is, is we are, we were in the midst of all being isolated and self-isolating. And mm. my experience with Conchelle is the community that you, that you bring, bring, that you form. And I think that, I think that what, I, what I heard was a need for some sort of communion and community and assembly in this moment, in this unique moment. And so what, what drew me to this, why I was excited to join this is because this seemed to be the right framework to, to be, it's, it's a reunion in a lot of ways for a lot of artists to come back and restart a conversation that was a, a larger conversation that was paused in this moment. And Donna and Carl, I wrote to you and Harry and what inspired you to answer the call to come together as BIPOC theater leaders to produce works that speak to what's going on in America right now with racism and oppression? I, uh, I'm gonna start a little further back on my story. My story. I came to Kumukuhua Theater eight and a half years ago uh, uh, at a time when they needed someone with my skill set, but also I was looking for a brick and mortar theater that specifically practiced theater of place, recognizing that our shared stories help reveal our shared humanity and the importance of that in our world and the, the um, lack of it that we have in a, in a lot of places. I, um, theater is a really unique conduit that is safe. Mm. So you can say things that are difficult and you, you can approach subjects and not only, you're not only talking about them as an audience, you're feeling these things, you are witnessing these things and it 
has such power. And then I came to Hawaii, have, having never had been here before, and I really did not know about how different this place is. And I didn't know about the cultures and I have learned, learned such a great deal because of theater. theater. And, I met, and I met Magali uh, at the Theater Communications Group conference last in June of 2019. We happened to meet in an elevator. It was absolutely <laughs> meant to be. And when she said she was devoted to people of the Caribbean in her theater work. And um, I, uh, we both, I think, realized then that someday we were destined to work together. And on top of that, everything that you've already said about this time in our lives and coming from this cocoon of, um, of quarantine to the reality of what's going on in the world has been such a period of opening up. And I have been, as a white woman, I have been searching for what can I do? What can I do? How can I support? and learn myself and help other people learn. So when I saw the email, you know what? You know what all I needed to see in the email was, I want I want I have a project I want you to work on with me. And I would have said, yes, I'll figure out a way to do that. And gosh, it's been such an amazing, I'm so glad it's been such an amazing experience thus far. I'm, I'm happy to, yeah, Harry. Oh, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. No. <laughs> no. Carl. Oh, you I'm want frozen. me to go? Okay, this is good. Yes. Let them come in. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Um, you know, who's going? Who's going on this I don't Zoom know. thing? Right. Uh, so, brata is a mm. word that means something more in in Jamaican expression, right? Colloquial expression, and uh, you know, I rep Jamaica. Magali represents Haiti, and we met at at a function. At, at a reading that was put on by one of our colleagues, um, Sandra Daly Sharif. And we spoke and, and immediately, immediately we thought that we should collaborate. And I have, have since, then, since then watched Magali put together some, just some amazing um, events that have to do with bringing people together, um, unearthing new work. And it's, it's, it's right up my alley. That excites me a whole lot. And I think the, the stars just aligned, COVID, all of this craziness because you know the, the injustice didn't just start and the mm -hmm. all, all 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 of the wickedness that has to do with brutality upon bodies that are black and brown and that are different uh, didn't just begin so you know i i also administrated a school and it was just at that time i, I was just finishing up classes at bmcc and where i teach theater and you know magali put this out and i said you know, and, and I'm going through my own personal anxieties with the moment and the movement and what to do. And then this just came. And I said, you know, Rata was, was already, already had a whole bunch of events lined up that we had to compete in June. And, June. and, and uh, I said to Andrew, we should do this. And of course, it was just like, you know, we're crazy. We can't do that. I said, all right, I'll, I, will, I, I, will, I will do this because this excited me. It was a chance to collaborate. And I also felt that um, it wasn't something to be done alone. Mm -hmm. I, I think there is, you know, because we have to think about our mental health in this. And whereas the handholding physically uh, cannot take place or, or is very limited, depending on where you're from right now, if you can hold a hand virtually and get people of like minds to come together uh, on, under similar umbrellas, then I think, and I, and I know we're not the only ones doing this, but the fact no. that this came to me and other people, and we all said yes. I'm like, all right, yeah, let's let's do something and let's do this. You know, as as for me, you know, like why participate in something like this? Um, you know, they, I think uh, we all come from different backgrounds, and the people that we speak to and the people we hope to speak to all come from different backgrounds. Um, but I mean, to say it as simply as possible, you know, when, when your house is on fire, you know, mm. you don't ask what to do. And this house has been on fire for so long. When I saw the email and I heard the opportunity, I was like, thank goodness, you know, I, I can start to help put out the fire, you know, and uh, that's, that, that's how I, I was so relieved and grateful for this possibility. 
because you don't let that happen. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So how do you feel? I mean, we are launching it on Friday, which is the beginning of Independence Day weekend. Again. What does, what does I mean, it, now the term Independence Day has a whole other meaning, especially for people of color. What do you feel the new, what is, what is this? And why is it important that we chose to launch it on Friday? What if, could I speak to something? Of it, it's course. just something historical about Hawaii. Maybe you folks know, but in um, July 4th, 1893 or 94, Oh my goodness. Uh, and I was never taught this in high school. I had to go to university to hear it from a Hawaiian yeah. studies class yep. that, um, that that's when the Republic Hawaii was, the Republic of Hawaii was finally founded, meaning the overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy was completed. Wow. That's the July opposite 4th. of independence, isn't it? Yeah. And then, mm. so like, I, I always wondered why, why I like, know. like, um, you know, how, uh, why don't my relatives celebrate July 4th, you yeah. know, and then, and then they, you know, they started to tell me the stories because it's in people, it used to be in people's lifetime that this happened, mm. yeah, living here in Hawaii where, where the Hawaiians lost their sovereignty, the native peoples of these islands. Illegally. July 4th, so much about yeah. it is about mythology. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's very appropriate that we're doing yeah. this show then for, for, our, for our theater and some of the people that we speak to here. The concept mm. of independence is not universally recognized by all the people mm. of America, ultimately. I mean, that is, that is a, that makes you think, what message were you conveying by deciding on July 4th, you will destroy a people? And their, their, their identity. That's wow, wow. Yeah, I've never oh, been happier yeah. to give up a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but I also hope that this, uh, from it being a moment to a movement, really gets us reflecting on the days that we've grown accustomed to cherishing and why we do the things that we do. Right. Because yeah. You know, I'm, you know, not wanting to rain on people's parade, but then maybe wanting to rain on their parade pur purposely because for so long we've kind of been dormant and just gone along. Uh, there was a time in Jamaica when Independence Day meant something for me and my family and we celebrated. Then, you know, I got into my 20s and it became about, well, let's go for a weekend on the North Coast and go to the beach with friends. And then at some point, you know, the importance of reclaiming what all of those things mean um, independence, um, celebrating Emancipation Day, then comes back to you somehow. And you have to take a look at, a look at it. it uh, the last three years I've been here, I've been going to Brooklyn uh, with the African market that celebrated around that time. Uh, just because, and, and, and it was just through a simple conversation with another Jamaican woman who had a, who had a radio show and she was talking about reggae and the importance, you know, Sharon, she's talking about reggae, the importance of reggae. And she's just like, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, it's Independence Weekend. I was like, she's like, no, come to this. Come mm. to this. It's a celebration of, of Black Pride. There'll be people of color there, uh, you know, traditionally done. I'm not sure it's happening again, um, clearly not this time around with COVID. But I started to do that and I started to enjoy myself at that, at that function. And it didn't have this whole stain of red, white, and blue and let's get burgers. And no, every stall meant something. Every, yeah. You know, you could learn something, you could enjoy uh, African traditions, African American traditions, Caribbean American traditions, and that, and that, just, that just started to mean something, and it was fun as well. As well. So yeah, I think, yeah. I think with, with what's happening right now, uh, yeah, if you don't get to, uh, you know, maybe it is that you still do burgers and fries or whatever it is that you do, but maybe the conversation changes. And mm. if, if it has to be a big old argument, that maybe it needs to be a big old argument, because we need mm. to stop shelving things and um you know packaging them in, in in little balloons that say red white and blue and yay usa i mean for me independence day it's been a mixed bag because i'm a first generation haitian american and so the true independence day is january 1st because that's when haiti was independent of the french in long before slavery was abolished in america 
And so that was my true independence day. And so July the 4th, when I thought of it in American history, I always knew there were still slaves. So what, how was that really independence day? A native people were being murdered still and their lands being stolen. So I never, I never understood what, what, how does that resonate for everyone? So it was really important to me for me to suggest to our group, let's start it on July 3rd because not fourth, because people are gonna be at the beach, but third, because that's the beginning of the weekend. And because we, I really wanted to allow people to stop and say, what is independence for all Americans? Does it truly exist? And how do we as a community come together and change that and improve? So how are we doing? How are we liking this process? We're doing this live, like this whole conversation live, mm -hmm on Facebook and YouTube, and we've been going through the process. How are you guys feeling? I mean, we've been having a good, I've been having a good time. I've been learning a lot. I think it's been an amazing process and, and um, so much learning. Yeah, yeah. So much, so learning, much learning for everyone, how to write for this environment and how to direct and how to act, I just, had a rehearsal last night and trying to help my actors figure out where to look yeah <laughs> you know it's a di <laughs> how, how how do you know when it's your cue it's very very different yeah. um yeah. but it's not going to go away no so uh i love that we have this coalition and this is just the beginning i think for all of us for learning um how to expand our theatrical expression and welcome mm -hmm. in new audiences that frankly, we're just not ever going to be able to reach in other ways. I've got to tell you, the process is both terrifying and lovely <laughs> because, <laughs> because it's, it, it, on one hand, it's a big old, big old mess, mess, right? But then you realize everybody's in this mess. Like it's a like global, it's a global mess. mess. Everybody's in transition. And uh, if you are blessed to have been in multimedia and you're doing film before then, and, and you're an introvert, this is your time. You are shining <laughs> in, right? You are <laughs> loving this. So this. And then if you're not, then you're like, what? But then you look around and you realize, wait a second, this is exactly what's happening right now. COVID is a mess, right? Uh, the brutality that is being met up on, 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 on our people. Uh, which is now being filmed, televised, that's a mm. huge mess. And mm. everybody's dealing with the mess. So it's like we, we, the, the learning curve. I don't even know if it's a curve anymore, some zigzag, <laughs> whatever the shape is. And we are all on it. Yeah. So it's just like the fact that we've come together as a coalition and we're like, okay, let's, you know, Magali is just like, okay, I've got the bus, everybody hop on. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to kind of figure out how we navigate this, this thing, thing um, make a statement. But, but and, 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 uh, I think I'm, I'm Cornel West, whether you agree with him or not, said something recently that I absolutely love, you know. And he said, you know, fail. You have to fail and fail mm. again and just fail better the next time, you know, because that's what it, it will feel very frustrating right now that, you know, um, I think I just, you know, people are still posting, today is a good day to arrest the people that, that killed Breonna Taylor because mm. that's, we're still dealing with people who have not... Uh, we're dealing with injustice, justice has not been served. And we're still dealing with this. So that's a failure that we have to keep on putting out there. And we're in this medium that we're unaccustomed to. And if we fail, we just have to get right back up and do it, yeah. right? Just yeah. get right back on and, and just keep on doing it. And we may not see some of these things happen in our lifetime, sadly enough. We may not see it, but it's just like, where uh, you, you started a train or a bus, whatever it is, whatever it is, I don't I don't remember what I did. But you started a coalition and we're on it on and it will pick up speed. Harry, you know, for how me are you it's, enjoying it? Oh yeah, it's great. You know, like for, for me the 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 thing that I that I've been thinking about and wondering about and is that you, you know there's there's a lot of information out there. But um there's few opportunities to turn that information into knowledge. You know, and I think that theater does that for people. You know, the moment that they can sit and then they can be they can be engaged in a story uh, that tells them something helps them clarify things in their mind and everything. And trying to do that in this new medium is blowing my mind. 
you know, because I, I've been trying to work with um, how are we going to get our season? How am I going to get the show that I, that I directed completely for the stage? stage? How am I going to put that on the screen and still be able to give that to the audience? And uh, I, I've, I've been astounded at the work that that's being done with this coalition. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Um, they say, uh, what is it? Um, good artists copy, you know, great artists steal. And I'm not saying I'm a great artist, but I'm going to be stealing so much <laughs> from this process <laughs> that I've been gaining. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, you guys are, are great uh, people to steal from. Awesome. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Loving it. So do we have any questions out there? We have our amazing stage managers on hand, volleying questions that are showing up on our Facebook and YouTube pages. If there are any, go ahead. We have nothing so far, but okay. whenever they do, they do pop up. I'll be back. back. Sounds good. We kept this as a surprise. We wanted to surprise our audiences. We didn't post anything about it. So don't, we shouldn't really be surprised if there are no questions, I guess. Yeah. So tomorrow, Friday, July 3rd, 8 p.m. EST, 2 p.m. HST. I'm learning how to say that, right? <laughs> Do not forget HST is six hours difference. We're going to start our amazing reset series think about it reset we want a reset we're going to start with jason ellis's blindfolded featuring michael sean harris directed by carl can you help me because i don't have that note here yeah uh, that's sophia sophia nair she's the director and awesome. we, we love sophia she's been working with them and they've been awesome job awesome job Awesome. Can Donna and Harry can we help out with the Kumukawa plays that are going to be featured, please? Yeah, we have Six by Jeannie Baroga and High Upside Down by Eric Stack. And Conchal Productions is bringing you The Dark Skin Kid Who Hopped the Turnstile, written by Tylee R. Scheider. I directed this first piece, and we have an amazing cast of actors, David Koppel, Jarvis Tomdio. And tomorrow, we're all, I'm, I ha might have goosebumps thinking about tomorrow, because we teched yesterday, and just seeing the work was so excited, exciting, and Harry was telling you, everything we're doing, we've never done before. So <laughs> it's just like, like, like going to high school prom. Not losing your mind before you do something major, like I guess join the military, but it's like high school, high school brown. You know, you know what I mean? And um, we look forward to, her to having you in the audience. Even though we didn't get any questions, and uh, if you do have, just go ahead and write it into our comment section and we will reply because our videos will stay online and you can keep on telling all your friends to check out our Facebook pages, which is at Conchell, at, at Conchell Prod or at Kumukahua, there's no theater. Is that part of your just, at? at? Just at Kumukahua. At mm. Kumukahua and at Brata Productions. So you're gonna be able to see our work for at least two months, but do come, do come tomorrow and enjoy the amazing journey. Let's all close out with whatever you guys wanna say to your audiences, because we're bringing together three amazing audiences for this yeah. powerful event. Uh, let's add that so the videos are going to be it's going to be live on the conch shell youtube and each of our facebook pages and then, and then they're going to live there so if you're, if you're like for hawaii, like for hawaii, hawaii it's two o'clock in the afternoon you may not be able to get a chance to watch it but it's going to be there and then barata and kumukuhua will eventually upload it to our youtube pages as well so you'll be able to you'll be able to see it there i i um I hope as many people as possible will join us live at least one of these Fridays, because when you do that and you put questions in the comments, following the shows, which are each going to be about 35, 40 minutes long, yeah. following those, we're immediately going to have a talk story with the uh, artists and then they'll, they'll be able to answer your questions live. And that's a really important point to make. Donna made a very important point and Harry made an important point. Carl, we are about communicating with you. 
You're not just watching us and having no interchange with the artist, artistic yeah. community. We want to know what you think. We want to know how you, how you feel. We want to hear your questions about the stories that we're going to be sharing, sharing with you. Just, we're trying to establish community, right? As, as I think it was Sergey or Carl, everyone was talking about in this period, community is just within the confines of your home. We want to expand what theater community means. And that means communication. So watch us live so that we can answer your questions and reply to your comments. Carl? Just, yeah, it's time for a reset. Uh, it will be very sad if after everything uh, you know, kind of settles down with COVID, we go back to normal. I don't personally mm -hmm. think we can. I think mm -hmm. everyone has been changed. And I think uh, together we can embrace that change. Right now, lots of artists, uh, theater artists are excited that, you know, they're putting, especially our playwrights, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to be seeing what people are saying about the work right in that chat screen, right in the chat. This, this is an exciting time. Uh, as a playwright myself, myself usually, usually you have to wait till after the play and you hear what some people say or say or send you, send you an email on the slide. Or to, you know. <laughs> but to, to now be able to see what people are thinking about different moments, uh, you know, the, the, the game has changed forever. And, uh, you know, together we can embrace it and make a change. So let's, let's embrace the reset. Join us tomorrow. Embrace the reset. I love it. <laughs> That's really good. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a lovely evening. And how do you say goodbye in the Hawaiian language? Aloha. Oh, it's oh, that's goodbye as well as hello. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> how about Jamaican? What's a Jamaican oh. goodbye? It's usually by our see you later. Or, see you, know, you later. <laughs> I'll say more technical things as we go along. <laughs> <laughs> and